This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be completely rearranging and redecorating my bedroom. You might be wondering why exactly I'm doing this since my room is a pretty nice functional space as it currently is. It does its job very well. Well to that I say I am having a mild kind of age crisis. I just turned 18 this past May and graduated high school soon after that. But everything feels exactly the same as it did before and I feel like I should feel different by now, but I really don't. So my brain is compelling me to make a change in my physical space in hopes that by changing the space that I live in, my brain will also start to reflect that change in frame of mind. Another part of it is that I am very concerned that I'm going to be attending University of Zoom Los Angeles right here in my bedroom. Also, rest assured that my room never has been and likely never will be Pinterest perfect. I'm always going to have my janky storage solutions and mismatched hangers. I don't want to get rid of things that just conform to some ideal aesthetic. I'm just going to keep going with what's functional and makes me happy. That's enough about me. Let's get started with the room makeover. Before I even think about reorganizing and redecorating, I'm going to declutter some of the items that I no longer need. I need to return my track uniform and my textbooks to the school. I'm returning some of my choir music to the choir directors, dropping off some return packages at UPS, and I have some library books, and I'm not sure whether or not I can return them because the library is closed, but we'll swing by and see if anything's going on. After I got it through my doorway, the process of setting up the chair was pretty quick and easy. All I had to do was put the legs into the spaces underneath, which apparently I had some trouble with, and then used the nuts and bolts included in the kit to screw them in place. And ta-da, that was it, my cozy new armchair. It's got a very comfy, velvety finish. The next new furniture item I wanted to construct was this white supply cart. It's very similar to that IKEA Roskog cart that is very popular. My Swedish followers, I'm so sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce that word. But this one has four tiers and it's not from IKEA. This took a little bit more work and thinking than setting up the chair. I had to put together the pipes into the main structure which honestly was not that hard, like y'all can handle this if you want to do the same thing and set up your own mail order furniture. And then I just installed the four different tray basket things. The last step was to twist the wheels into the bottom of the cart, and that was it. The cart is finished. This futon has been in my family for perhaps longer than I have, and it is most definitely falling apart. It lived a good life as a pull-out sofa for guest beds, but it really no longer belongs in my room. We rolled it all down the stairs about a week before I filmed the before sequence, actually, so that's why you didn't see it before. Time to collect some snacks. And thus began the process of completely rearranging the layout of the furniture in my room. Beforehand, my furniture was just in a circle along the walls of the room, so my plan was to separate my bedroom into two halves, one with my desk and filming equipment and other working supplies, and the other half with my bed, my closet, and other personal life relaxing things, with my bookshelves forming a divider between the two. But before we could get started with rearranging the furniture, I had to take all of my stuff off of my bookshelf and my other storage shelves, that way they wouldn't fall off and rattle around when I was moving things. I placed pretty much all of my worldly possessions into the hallway outside my room.
first we shifted the bookcase over since it would be one of the main facets dividing my bed from the productivity half of the room. Then my dad and I worked together to shift my bed over from one corner of the room to the other. Honestly, this section was a lot of just me standing around attempting to be helpful while my parents did most of the heavy lifting because they are buffer than I am. Anyways, after all that heavy lifting, we moved in my two smaller bookshelf storage units, vacuumed up all of the dust left over from 10 years of the furniture staying in that exact same spot. I washed my sheets and then began dusting off all of these shelves. The approximately five generations worth of dust on these shelves also merited a quick wiping down with a wet cloth and then buffing it out with a dry one. Now that everything has been moved into its rightful spot and cleaned off a bit, I began the process of putting everything back, which took just as long as taking it out, honestly, except this was even harder because I had to make decisions instead of just being able to simply scoot everything out and put it in a giant mess of a pile. I had to remember where things went. Most of my belongings have kind of already found a home, so I just left them in the same storage spots they had previously been in, but I did a little bit of adjusting in order to streamline my organization system. And as you can see right now, I'm also cleaning out a bunch of old papers that I no longer feel like I need to use or reference since, you know, just graduated high school. So I have absolutely no use for AP US history DBQs. Of course, there are still some things under there that I kept, but we'll show you more about that later in the official tour of the finished room section of that video. I know, I'm sorry for keeping you hanging. I'm sure you're so curious to know which math notebooks I decided to keep. Now here is the fully rearranged room layout without any of the fun decorations, but those are coming next. The first thing to do was to take down the fairy lights from the corner where they previously had been, where they were lighting up the area next to my bed and surrounding the window that my desk faced. I had other plans for these string lights. They're going on to bigger and better things than being scotch taped to my wall. Really not a mounting solution I recommend, especially if you do not own the wall that you are sticking things onto because paint will come off. My plan was to string the lights up above my bed in a crisscrossing pattern. So first my dad and I put up these hooks and by that I mean my dad did all of the work because I am too short and I cannot reach the ceiling while standing on my bed. So what I did was loop the copper wire stuff around the hooks and then alternate them back and forth. There were five hooks on each end and I had two strands of lights that were about 30 feet each. and I taped the black wires in a spot where my bed would essentially hide them from view unless you were right next to the lights. And ta-da, that is the result. The next problem to tackle was the kind of ugly back of my bookshelf that I had to look at every time that I was on my bed. It just isn't a pretty sight, so I decided to order this super large constellation poster off of Redbubble. I was able to stick it into my wooden bookcase with push pins on the top, but the bottom section was on particle board, which I can't use a push pin on, so instead I just used packing tape. Again, not a recommended mounting solution, but it did the job. Next was the cute Pinteresty decoration corner where I decided to hang up my ukulele. It's not just a wall decoration item, like I can actually play this instrument, but since it is cute and Pinterest aesthetic looking, I thought might as well display my aesthetically pleasing objects as part of the decor. I also mounted some glasses. About a month ago, I did a sponsorship with a glasses company and being the giant idiot that I am, I sent them the wrong prescription. I sent them my contact lens prescription. So I can't actually see out of these glasses without getting a major headache. 
which is so unfortunate because they're so cute and I want to wear them. But alas, I had to resign them to just being cute while scotch taped on my wall. I know this section is very blurry. I did a not a great job filming it, but you'll see the end result soon, I promise. It looks pretty aesthetically pleasing. I didn't really want to buy any posters or art prints if they weren't something that I had organically come across because I feel like that is the best way for me to find art that means something to me. But I did hang up these two postcard things that I already had. And I got this chocolate frog box when I visited Harry Potter World in seventh grade, and I never knew what to do with it, but it looks pretty cute on my wall like this. I did some additional zhuzhing up of this corner using this lamp and the armchair and a brown throw blanket on top of the armchair. I didn't end up keeping the lamp in this room because it just felt too cluttered in the space, especially because I already had another lamp. But here is what it ended up looking like. Later, I went back and mounted the Hermione wand that I also got from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter when I was in seventh grade. Just really gotta display my Harry Potter merch because it is cute and I don't know what else to do with it. So I screwed in two more of those hooks that I had been using for pretty much everything and put the wand in. I made these macrame plant hangers by hand because it's a lot cheaper than buying them online and it was really fun and relaxing to do these DIYs, majorly inspired by Ashley at Best Dressed. So I just put the houseplants in their little homes and hung them up on these hooks that my dad had previously drilled into the ceiling. I also needed to repot this plant buddy who was starting to outgrow the plastic nursery planter that it came in. I got this white plastic pot online and it looks pretty cute, I guess. I don't honestly know whether or not I'm repotting this plant correctly, but what I did was put the plant in the soil and then put the soil there and then put it in my room and then water it. That was such an unscientific explanation. My last decorative item were these cute little window crystals, once again inspired by Ashley at Best Dressed. I just have three sparkly yo-yos now. My dad, the real MVP of this room makeover, had already drilled two holes into the ceiling next to my desk, so it was a really simple process to just hang them up. And with that, the room makeover was complete, so let me show you around the final product. Directly next to the door, we've got this little entryway table that I use to store basically anything that I might need to grab real quick when I'm leaving the house. So in this box, I've got stuff like my keys, my phone, my wallet, and some COVID necessities like Kleenex tissues and my face mask. This table's also where I keep my Google Home. I got it for free with my Spotify subscription, so now I just keep it here so it can harvest all of my data. This little command hook is where I keep my backpack. Most of my other bags go in my closet, which I will show you next. My closet is not a particularly interesting location. All I've got in here are clothes and random ugly things that I don't want to be visible in the other parts of my room. In this hanging organizer, I have my pajamas, accessories, underwear, and socks. I store all of my clothes that are in season on these hangers. Sometimes if I'm really lazy and I don't want to hang things up, I just put them on these hooks over here, conveniently located so that I don't have to make a giant pile of clothing on the ground. But what we do have on the ground, laundry hamper, shipping supplies, and other random filming things that I don't use that often. But also, up here, we've got even more random filming things that I don't really use that often. And lastly, on this side, we have two command hooks and this random out of place nail that I use to store my tote bag, purse, and sports bags. 
I chose for it to be tucked in this little alcove behind my bookshelves because my windows are quite large. They directly face the street lamps and the road outside and the blinds aren't very good at blocking out light. So in the past I've had some trouble with waking up in the middle of the night because of the noises of cars going by or the lights coming through from the street. So I found this to be a pretty effective solution at just blocking it all out. And the fairy lights and the celestial poster and the white sheet set just make me feel like I am fulfilling my childhood dream of sleeping in the clouds amongst the stars. These items include my off-season clothes and any clothes or books that I'm selling secondhand. This little section of wooden bookcases is my central storage area. In this step ladder series, I mostly have my art supplies and school supplies, like paper, sticky notes, and tape, along with a bin for storing storage solutions and for items that I don't think I need anymore, but I'm keeping them in a purgatory. Maybe I'll use this, but if I don't in the next six months, I'll just give them away. Over here is where I keep pretty much anything related to technology, along with some filming supplies that don't fit in the next shelf over. And beneath that we've got home goods like candles and cleaning supplies. Next we've got this big bookshelf, which you previously saw from the other side. Up on the top I have my ukulele case and my kazoo, obviously my most prized possession. Over here is all of the physical books I own. I don't have a lot of physical books, unfortunately. Even though I prefer to read a paper-bound book, I find myself reading on an e-reader a lot more often because it's so much more portable. Below that, I have paper-bound items that are not really books. So we've got some of my old journals. I have a mug full of medals for some reason. Um, my book, Study With Me, that I wrote a guide to bullet journaling for students, and my collection of yearbooks. The shelf below that is for filming and photography equipment. Then we've got art supplies like calligraphy pens, sketchbooks, embroidery floss, paint. And the last shelf below that is for an archive of academic related things. This is where I keep any old notebooks or sheet music or papers that I think I might go back and reference later. Everything that I don't think I need to get is actually in this giant Safeway bag that I'm hiding behind my armchair. This bookshelf divider section forms this second little nook in this corner, which I use as a cozy little reading corner because I have my library books on this shelf over here and my other books are up there. Since this area is also the most decorated and aesthetically pleasing, I also use it as my filming corner. Lastly, here is my workspace. This white desktop is from Ikea, and the bottom base is actually a standing desk. So I can just make it move up and down and change height as needed if I, say, want to be standing up for any reason. Sometimes if my legs just feel restless or my neck hurts or something, I'll just engage this cool little table. And it's also really useful for taking photos if I just want the desk to be positioned at a different spot for a different angle or different lighting. You might notice that there's actually very little stuff on my desk. That's because I find that I'm the most productive when there just isn't that much clutter around me so that I can instead focus in on the things I'm doing. Instead, I store most of the supplies I need in the aforementioned bookshelf arrangement on that side and this supply cart. On the top shelf, I have my library books that I might be reading, my journal and bullet journal, and the little tiny notebook that I use for planning out videos. I've also got these random artwork things that I haven't figured out where to store yet, so we're just gonna pretend that I have it all figured out. This next tier contains quite a variety of items, but it's mostly just random supplies that I'd use for school or for personal care while I'm at my desk. This third tier below it has all of my makeup and brushes. And then the last one is just a couple of random things that I haven't figured out where else to store, like these two jars and my water bottle. I honestly feel like this cart is too big and I don't actually have enough things to fill it, but I mostly got it to use in my dorm room later, where I will have less storage options than in my room, and therefore I'll probably put more things onto this cart. 
And last but not least, we have the ugly corner of random things, which includes a mess of cables and camera battery chargers, my printer resting on an IKEA step stool, and this map that I'm working on as a birthday present. And we have these window crystals, which during most of the day are vaguely annoying because I always hit my head on them whenever I'm trying to get something out from the printer. But during sunset, when the sunlight is streaming in through my windows, they refract the light into these little rainbows that are scattered everywhere, and it's pretty stunning. As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one website building platform. If you've been looking to start a blog about interior decor or DIYs or crafts, Squarespace is a great way to get started. You can set up a blog page with just a few clicks and find some beautiful templates for a blog. From there, it's really easy to get started with writing a post and adding photos and creating custom layouts. Squarespace also includes extra blogging features like being able to schedule posts or work on drafts with multiple collaborators. If you're interested in getting started with your own Squarespace website, visit squarespace.com slash studyquill for 10% off your first website or domain. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring my video. I upload new videos every week and I post photos of my bullet journal and notes on my Instagram, which is at studyquill. See you next time.